time for our theme song. Here I am. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing us here this morning. Help us to be ready to go where you send us. For Jesus' sake, amen. Be seated, please. Good morning. Are we thankful to be here today? You know, we're up here in this peaceful, peaceful place. And there are people all over the world that are in places that are not so peaceful. We can be so thankful that at this time we have peace. But what are we supposed to be doing now? Sharing, living it living the gospel, but if I keep it just to myself, that won't work, will it? 
Can you imagine how many people will someday turn to us and say, why didn't you tell me you had that truth, but you didn't tell me? Today we want to focus on let's live it. That is the theme for the conference. Do you get this little magazine? Did you get it? More to focus. Oh, I have to stay away from that. Let's live it. What are we living so that, let's take a look at some things. If I can figure out where, okay. Let's live it for who? Jesus. Jesus. You know, he walked this earth at one time and his whole life was spent sharing God's love. So let's live it for Jesus. How can we live it? Prayerfully, prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Not that it is necessary in order to make it known to God what we are, but in order to enable us to receive him. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but brings us up to him. Prayerfully, do you think we spend enough time in prayer? No. <laughs> you know, I am as guilty as anyone. Often, when do we resort to prayer? When something happens in an emergency, we suddenly find the prayer button in our life. And we say, please, help. And when things are going well, we sometimes forget to be the thankful person that lets God know how much we appreciate all he's done for us. Remember, though, prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. If you think of that, you can tell God what you would tell your dearest friend, but you know what? He already knows it. He's just waiting to hear from us. Okay. So we will live it for other way. I'm going the wrong way. Okay. Pray for ourselves. We pray for ourselves that each of us will discern ways that we can fully live as God calls us to live. Gracious God, hear our prayer. So first, who are we praying for? Ourselves. That isn't selfish. Can you share something you don't have yourself? No. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit to share it with others. So we have got to pray for ourselves. Who else are we going to pray for? Others. Does that mean just the people we like? No. And you know, there's so many people out there that are waiting for the truth. Let's pray that God will lead us to them. Sometimes we really are a bit afraid to be led to them because we don't know that we'd say the right thing. We don't need to be afraid. If we are following God's will and his love in our life, he will give us the words at the time. Have you ever had something happen and suddenly you're talking with this perfect stranger about God? That isn't a happenstance. That's God's will in your life. We need to study to show ourselves approved to God. In Bible doctrines, at College Dale Academy in my junior year, we had to memorize for the test 200 texts. Now, he was only going to give us 100, but we didn't know which 100. I did fine, but you know what? That was a long time ago. I graduated in 59. Those that I memorized in 57 and 58, unless I have used them and keep up with them, are they all there? I always thought, well, I'll put them in there. He said he'd bring them back. No, he didn't say I'll bring them back forever if you never study. You know, we have filled our hearts with texts, but we have got to keep reviewing them. There will come a day when we don't have a Bible. And we will be asked, why are you doing that? And it's like, uh-oh. Which text, 100 and number 150, I don't remember that text. No, that's not going to work. We need to be studying to show ourselves approved unto God. Let's teach others about Jesus. 
Can that be fun? Have you ever had someone discover the truth with your help? Back when we lived in Carson City, Nevada, some of us decided to have our own evangelistic meetings. We had a person in the church, he was just amazing. He says, I'll be the speaker, you guys be the music, we're going to go do it. We did. That was some of the most joyful time a whole family came into the church. You know, you don't have to say only the evangelists and only the preachers. That's what we pay them for, and I don't have to do it. No, God says, I expect each of you to share. Reach out to others. I think reaching out is one of the most valuable ways. If someone is hungry, if someone is tired, if someone needs clothing, they're cold, they're too hot, whatever, it doesn't do to reach out. Our bodies have to be functioning to keep our minds functioning. And if you're starving, are you too interested in listening to a Bible study? Probably not. So we need to reach out to others in their physical needs also. Share God's love with others. That's one of the most fun things to do. Share God's love with others. You know, you say, well, I don't know who I would share with. Ask God to send them your way. He will. Start some kind of mission outreach. You know, Paul and I have been blessed to be offered the opportunity to go into Florida Hospital Waterman every Friday night and for 30 minutes do religious music, singing and the piano. What a blessing to us that is. And it blesses others. I remember the little tiny boy that walked out the door. His mother's dragging him out and he's turning around, about probably three or four, and he turned around and he says, thank you. Out of the words, the words from a child's mouth that made our day. But you know, find your way to share. And sometimes, you know, when we were asked to do that, it was like, excuse me? You want us to do what? But what a blessing to us and hopefully to others. People will come and stand a minute and smile and go on. Staff will come, you know. You never know where a hymn will reach out. You will never know where a kind word will reach out. Help others. There's always the needy with us. And that's a test. That's a test God sends our way. What are you going to do with others? Share the necessities of life with others. I don't think any of us came to church hungry because we had no food. But right now, there's so many people hungry and have no food. When we find out, maybe we can do more to help. If you have two shirts, give one to the poor. If you have food, share it with those who are hungry. I think probably all of us could give out a meal and not eat ourselves and probably not miss it. Keep connected with the sick people. So often, people when they're ill feel so discouraged and they need someone to come in and share just a word of inspiration, a Bible text, a prayer. So it's another way we can be connected in mission service. Just a prayer, just a touch of the hand. You know, as an RN, I learned that just a kind touch can be so calming and so treasured by the person that's being touched. Just a hand on the arm letting them know just the feeling of a human touch. You know there are many people that go through life without the feeling of a human touch. That touch helps us keep going. SALT is what this magazine is talking about, and it stands for Service and Love Together. Service and Love Together. My brother's keeper, homeless ministry, sharing God's word with the homeless. Now that's one that I don't think I could do so well. Um, <laughs> okay, and God probably will say, okay, you just said that, guess what? 
But there are people that do that so well. You know, they reach out to everyone they come in contact with. And I hope if I find someone, Paul and I like to walk the bridge over the lake over here, and you run into different people, I hope the Lord will impress me at the right time to reach out to the homeless because you find them there. But some are simply seeking human kindness. My mother used to say as a widow, and she was widowed very young, my dad was a pastor, and he didn't know that you don't work 23 hours a day. You have so much life force. He did, and he died at 55. She was left a widow having never worked a day in her life. But she said the thing that was so hard is because no one was there to, you know, to reach out and touch her, the kindness that you run into. What about the widows? What about the lonely that are around us? Reach out in human kindness. Whoever is generous to the poor leads to the Lord, lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. No, that's not the reason we do it. We reach out in kindness because we love others, because God's love is shining through us. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, read it with me, ye have done it unto me. Remember, that one person you reached out to is like doing it to Jesus. What are we doing for these people? Time is getting short, and we have to be ever ready to do whatever we need to do. You know, we, as Christians, have been given an obligation. Someday, someone may walk up to me and say, why didn't you tell me about Jesus? Why didn't you? I saw you every day, and yet you kept it to yourself. The message is what we've got to get out to people. The secret plan, okay, that's something totally different. Um, but I want you today to take from this service, if nothing else, that God has given you life. He has given me life to share his love with others. That is the entire purpose of our lives. And if we reach out and share, we don't have to worry about the reward. You get the reward here. And is there someone in heaven writing down the deeds? Yes. But we're not doing it. We're not earning our way to heaven. We're doing it because God's given us love for others. This week, look for someone to share with that you can share God's love by helping them. I wanted to give, instead of a mission report, I wanted to give a little update of life. Very interesting, we were, it was brought to my attention today, uh, this week. There's a secret plan out there, and it's already being put in place some places, to put a GPS tracker in every person. Uh, there's quite a bit said about it. Um, they want to do it right away. I don't think it said they want to do it by 2017. I don't know. Recently, Australia has become the first country to begin microchipping its public. Just a little report to what's going on out there. You know, it's not a scare tactic. It's simply we have got to be aware. We know in the last days there will be a mark. We want to be sure that we share this gospel before it is shut down and we can't share it. So be sure that when you have the opportunity this week and it, the Lord puts someone right in your way, instead of jumping over them, stop and help. All right? God's love is what we can share. And at this time, we will have a mission spotlight.
I was tortured for 20 days. They wanted me to reject Christianity, but I wouldn't do it. I grew up looking for God. I wasn't always a Christian. I learned about Jesus from one of my neighbors who shared the Bible with me. In my country in the Middle East, being a Christian is dangerous. But once I discovered the gospel, there was no way I would ever give it up. Somehow, the government learned I was a Christian and captured me. They tortured me with hopes that I would turn my back on Jesus. But God protected me from the pain and I felt peace like I have never felt before. I knew they planned to kill me eventually, so I managed to escape and fled with my family out of the country. We live in another country now due to the turbulence at home. My experience has led me to dedicate my life to God's work. And now I am working as a global mission pioneer, building a new congregation of believers in my city. We meet for Bible study and fellowship each weekend. Sometimes we go to a local park when we can't fit inside my home. We always share a meal together. Most of the people who come are refugees too. We all have that in common so we can relate to being in a new country and we have formed good friendships with each other. During the week, I teach Bible to people at my home every day. Sometimes I even give lessons to people back in my home country through online video chat. God is blessing my work as a global mission pioneer and is preparing people's hearts to be transformed by Him. He spared my life because I know He had plans for me to share the gospel message with the people I meet here. Please pray for the Middle East. Pray that the gospel can spread throughout this challenging territory. Thank you for supporting the work of global mission pioneers like me so that we can teach others about Jesus. You know, when we lived in Atlanta, Paul taught in Atlanta, and started a new school there. We were in the Atlanta North Church. We had actually a Romania group, and many of them had fled. The husbands left the country, they snuck out. They fled, and then were able to get their families over once they came over. But there was a whole wonderful, wonderful group of Romanians. This is a real thing, and it's happening all the time. While we have daylight, and we're able to do things, let's spread God's word because the time is coming when that will apply to us. At this time, I wanna once again welcome each one of you here and especially if you're visiting for the first time, we're so glad to have you. Please come back and I see some people that haven't been here in a while. And have a wonderful Sabbath. At this time, we will go to our various classes. One meets in here, several meet in the hall, and I'm sure you're probably sitting with someone that will take you to one. If not, ask me. I will be glad to help you, and we'll separate at this time. <laughs>